It's that time again, people. It's time for a handbag unboxing. I can't believe it. It's happening again. We are here on this channel unboxing another handbag baby to add to my collection. And it's literally, I want to say maybe five or six weeks ago <laughs> that I actually bought my Chanel handbag, which I also unboxed here. I didn't realize I was going to add another handbag to my collection quite so soon, but I'm going to use the excuse of, you know, release from lockdown birthday coming up just yolo enjoying life <laughs> as the kind of excuse but anyway i'm so excited to unbox this live with you guys here she is you can peep her from the side she is still in her original packaging so i'm gonna open her up with you now and actually i'm even happier to bring you today's video because it's actually ticking off one of my wish list items from my luxury 2021 wish list it's something that i've been needing for quite some time and that is a work bag so as not to be elusive but anyway I'm just gonna take out this beautiful box from this beautiful orange packaging and obviously it's a Louis Vuitton. Ooh. That didn't go very well. It's a brand that I haven't really bought too much from in the past, to be honest with you. I've only gotten two items, I think, ever. The Keeper Bandulia, which I absolutely love a lot, but I bought that many, many years ago. And um, I also bought a very, very, honestly a very small item, a key holder, which is the six ring key pouch, I think is what it's called. So nothing really significant in my LV buying history. Don't have an essay or anything. I guess until now I got, I got a lovely ladies card. So hopefully this will be the start of a blossoming friendship amongst us. I teased what I was gonna buy in my Harrods vlog, which hopefully if I've been very, very timely in my uploads should have been a bonus video that went up also in the same week as this video going up because now I'm doing these bonus vlog things just as an experiment, just to see if you guys like them. But basically, I bought this bag at my favorite store of all time in the UK. Y'all know it's Harrods. It's the epitome of luxury shopping. I think it's also a really great tourist destination. So when things open up again, they better open up again because things look so temperamental here, then definitely hit it up because it's definitely worth the visit. Took a trip up to Harrods just to check out some work bags that I could potentially add to my collection. Went to Interlou of Ton to check out their new collection of items from the By the Pool collection and also because I've never really been into the new Louis Vuitton fixture in Harrods. They redid the whole thing. It looks really, really nice. What ends up happening is a very funny story of how I got this bag. But what I'll do is I'll show you the bag, obviously unbox and everything like that first. Then I'll tell you the story because in fact, I placed this bag on order initially and then I swapped which bag I was gonna get. Let me just take everything out of this uh, big carrier bag. Inside, I've just got the receipt, of course, which I'll go into details. I'll dive into the, the hard numbers in a bit. And also perfume from Louis Vuitton, which is a perfume I've never smelt, actually. It's a Coeur Baton. Oh, it's got my eye. Oh, that's fresh. Mmm, smells like a fresh spring day. I didn't, I was gonna say summer, but I don't know why I'm holding like this as well. Linen, but also sweet with a bit of honey notes. I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, that smells very, very nice. And it's actually glass. For my ASMR lovers out there, it's glass. So it's actually not a cheap bottle. So that's quite nice. I love that that she gave me a sample. Let's let me open her up. Oh, and she is heavy. Isn't that satisfying? That's great. Let me just pull this out. Like a little Christmas card for me. And, um, I don't know, did I get a little love letter or whatever? From me to me. <laughs> There's nothing inside. Nothing. Well, I guess that's quite a nice touch though in terms of, not the fact that there's nothing inside because it's a bit sad for me, but um, if you were to gift your significant other or someone else a bougie gift that you could write some sweet, sweet nothings on here. And now I just can't get this back in. Ooh, that was satisfying. Anyway, I'm going on a massive tangent and I haven't opened the bloody box. So let me open her out now. I'm sorry, I feel like my voice broke. This unboxing is going great. Let's see if you can guess what this is. It's a very popular bag at the moment. So I doubt you'll be too surprised, but let me bring her out. Oh, she's soft. Not gonna lie, I thought they were gonna stuff this bag, but they haven't. So I'm going to have to find all of the air paper and stuff her to the brim because she sure does need it. Anyway, 
Let me open the dust bag. Oh, smells of new bag. So here we have the The Louis Vuitton 1854 limited edition on the go tote in size GM. And I'm so glad I said that all correctly in one go. My goodness, she is a beauty, but she's slightly deflated, which is what I was saying about how I wish she was stuffed a little bit. Might I also add that she's probably not what you thought she was going to be, because if you had seen the video, the aforementioned video that I had talked about earlier, the uh, Harrods vlog, I went to go and check out the Louis Vuitton collection, the Biopool collection. I actually placed on order a very different bag and it was still the on the go to. It was just the version in the uh, by the pool collection. So it was the broom color and it was a beautiful gradient color. It was in the canvas, whereas this is in the jacquard textile material. Very, very similar, might I add, to the Dior book tote, as some of you may already probably be able to gather just visually looking at it. I wanted a really nice work bag that could fit a laptop. I thought it would be quite a nice travel bag or literally for on the go, which haha, it is called the on the go, of course. It seemed from the pictures that I saw online, I did a lot of research and reviews against other bags from other fashion houses as well, might I add, that this one actually seemed the best option because of the, also the multiple ways to wear it with the straps as well that can also hide inside, which I thought was quite nice. But I did want it, like I mentioned, in the By The Pool collection version. And obviously that one is also limited edition, as well as the 1854. I believe this one was last year's collection, but they still stock it because it's kind of like the heritage. 1854 is when they founded the fashion house. So I think they're still stocking it for a little bit of time. Essentially what happened is when I went to Harrods, I picked that bag out, but there was a dent actually in the model that they showed me. I did feel, as a side note, a little bit rushed when I went to Louis Vuitton that day. It was a Saturday, I think, and it was very, very busy. I wouldn't recommend going on a Saturday. If you can avoid Saturday or at least go early when it's opening hours, that might be better just so that you get a little bit more relaxed vibe when you go and browse. I felt very, very rushed with my sales associate. I had a random sales associate, of course, because I have no real buying history there. And it just felt like she was rushing to make me do a purchase. And of course I did want this bag, but I also wanted to check out, for example, the MM size, because I wanted to see whether a laptop could fit. And spoiler alert, of course, it fits in the GM very, very nicely. The MM, I don't think Mm, that much really it's diagonal from what I see and so I end up placing the by the pool collection tote the GM version uh in I placed an order for it it was going to come in a few days fast forward a couple of days later I got a notification via my email that the bag had come in stock and so I could go and collect it I didn't actually collect it until the following weekend so I say the following weekend the weekend of that week so go into Harrods again drive up Basically, the one activity that I have is to go and get this bag. And I not necessarily told them I was coming a lot later than when they sent me the notification on the Tuesday, but I was pretty confident in the knowledge that they'd have my bag and they'd be able to get it for me in 10 minutes. Bob's your uncle, I'd be on my way. You know what I'm saying? No, that did not happen. As you can probably gather from the tone of my voice, the way I'm telling the story, I got to Harrods just before 11, which I didn't realize was their opening hours. I didn't realize they were so late. I thought they were gonna be open a lot earlier, but made a beeline to Louis Vuitton, one of the first there, of course. And for about half an hour, they could not locate this bag. I was there with my mum. Thankfully, we both love bags. And so we just kind of walking around and lo and behold, saw this bag, which I hadn't actually seen the last time that I was in Louis Vuitton because we felt so rushed. But there was something very um, elegant about this particular bag and very uh, classy and expensive looking, if I can say that, than what the By The Pool collection one in Broom gave off. I feel like this one, funnily enough, is actually £10 cheaper than the tote in the By The Pool collection. However, for me, it looks a lot better quality. It feels better quality and it looks a bit more special than the other one, which I feel is quite seasonal, obviously, in the nature of the name and the collection style. It's By The Pool. It's probably primarily a pool bag, spring summer bag. But then I was like, Do you know what? Reality check you live in London, you live in the UK, you're not gonna get that much sun. Who knows when it will be that you next go out and travel. And actually, if you want a work bag, 
This seems like a work bag, a bougie flex work bag, but less so compared to the other one. The other one's a bit too gaudy. I think it's stunning. Again, like I mentioned, reminiscent of the Dior book tote, but without that crazy price, because I think that's probably a thousand pounds more actually compared to this one. And also I think it's a nicer size. To my knowledge, it comes in the PM, the MM and the GM as the as do most Louis Vuitton bags actually, but I did manage to find an MM during my visit back to the store after she couldn't find my bag. Then she couldn't actually find my receipt, which was quite funny afterwards when we we're doing the exchange. But during that time, I saw a lady get an MM bag and we were just like, mm, can I have a look at that MM bag? Cause I actually seen that you got one in stock. Cause I think there was this elusive thing going on where they were pretending that they didn't have any MM bags in stock, but this guy that was very helpful managed to get that bag for me to try on. He raised a good point actually, and he was saying to me how with this style of bag, with it being boxy and square and an on the go, like kind of very book tote vibes, that it almost looked a bit too small in the MM size. It almost needed an in-between size between the MM and the GM. But for that reason, I went for the GM, I stuck with it. And I'm actually really glad that he brought out the MM because honestly, that one that he brought out was in the canvas and it did look a little bit cheap. So I found the build of this particular on the go tote in the 1854 print to be a lot better than the By the Pool collection one. The By the Pool collection lining inside, and I did take some footage as well of the insides comparing them, was very, very paper-like. And it was also such a light color uh, fabric that I feel like with any item that you put in there, because it's meant to be on the go, right? You can put anything from work or travel or whatever in there. It would just scuff up so easily. And I've seen a lot of videos about people who've had Neverfalls in the Rose Ballerine print, I think it is, which is the lighter pink. That one just marks up so easily. And I thought, you know what, Mel, knowing you and knowing that what you want to use the bag for, it's probably better to go for the dark lining. It's a lot more forgiving and it just feels a lot higher quality, to be honest. And I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. None of these bags are worth the £2,000 or whatever I paid for it. In fact, let me just check the receipt to make sure I am not speaking out of turn because I did promise you guys I would uh, read it out to you. So yeah, there was a £10 price differential. I bought this bag for £2,050, whereas the Buy the Pool collection bag that I had placed on order was £2,060. So none of these bags, let's be honest, are worth that much. We are paying for the name, we're paying for the heritage. Even despite knowing that, I want to get as good a quality bag as I possibly can. And this particular bag, the 1854 one, seems a lot better in terms of that build as well. Also something that I wasn't such a fan of with the by the pool collection bag which i really should have listened to my gut up front is the fact that the leather obviously the leather details the leather trims on this particular bag are black and they're not vachetta leather they're not going to patina i've mentioned this before i think in a previous video somewhere but i really don't like when the leather patinas on louis vuitton bags which each to their own by all means you know but for me personally I would not be able to get that even honey glow. I don't like the color that it turns into this deep, deep brown color. It's just not for me personally. And so with that in mind, although the color of the leather looks quite nice now in terms of the By The Pool collection totes, it looks very, very light and it works very well, I think, with the gradient color of that spring summer style bag. When it comes to the aging of that bag, obviously none of us know how that bag will look after some time after the leather has honeyed and patinaed. And I just think if it looks brown against the gradient, the beautiful soft gradients of the pinks and the peach tones, it just probably is gonna look out of place and also probably look like a fake bag or a tacky bag. Uh, especially also if the leather patina is not even as well. I just, I just know with me and my hand oils or with the, temperamental UK weather as well, that it just would not look good and it would almost just be a waste of money in that stage. So I found that this particular bag then, obviously with it being black, it's not gonna have the same issues in terms of scuffs. I think those are the main details about this particular bag. I think I've shown you around just briefly, but let me do the proper tour. So obviously you've got this jacquard print and obviously you can see the little 1854 Lego printed inside, which I think is quite nice. And it follows through through the sides as well and all the way onto the base of the bag. I may as well just mention that this, as you can see, has no feet, which honestly is the last detail that I think would have been amazing to add to this bag, would have made it an A plus 
in my opinion. So you've got the leather trim details uh, clasps here on the sides to hold it together and it's gold hardware. And then you've got a an open pocket here and then you've got a zip pocket on the inside which has, oh, little stickers. So it has a sticker for the model and it says textile outside synthetic lining, cowhide trimming. And you've got the hidden leather straps which I think are such a nice detail to be able to pull out when you need it and i do find the drop length to be very good in terms of wearing it on the shoulder as well and even these uh smaller straps are good for the crook of the arm moment what you can also see here are two little fastenings that you can close the bag up i think very very similar actually to the neverfall style so you can fasten these two things up doubt i'll be doing that because to be honest it's a fiddle and actually the rest is just an open cabin which I think I'll probably need to have a bag shaper of sorts. So if you guys have any recommendations for me, please do leave them down in the comments because I'd love to know what you guys think are good. And usually I'm not such a super big fan of totes. Like I mentioned, I've never really been into the Neverfull tote, to be honest. And that's the big bag actually that is from Louis Vuitton's collection that everyone gets. I always found it also to be a security hazard, whereas I think this one is a lot more secure and safe. It's a lot more enclosed. There's the options, of course, again, to wear uh, over the shoulder as well, not just, you know, handheld or crook of the arm moment. And I will also insert some modeling shots here as well so that you can see what it looks like in reference to my body. For reference, I am 5'7 and a UK size 6 or 8, if that is of interest or help to you guys. I'm very pleased, as you can probably tell, that I bought this bag. Again, let me know on base shapers or handbag organizers that you recommend, or if you even have this bag, how you're getting on with it. And I'll probably then just leave this video here as I go and just stare at her a little bit more because she's so beautiful and I'm so glad she's in my collection, but I do probably need to go on some sort of handbag ban for a little while you know because i keep ticking off these wishlist items which makes me seem super efficient but also it's just i'm just doing it too quickly you know what i'm saying but anyways i hope you enjoyed this unboxing video i certainly did and i just can't stop staring at her let me know your thoughts down below and i will catch you in my next one